Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today's problem I got from one of my subscribers and I highly recommend you to watch this video to the end because if you take genetic course 100% you're going to have this type of problems on your exam. So echo R1 and RSA1 restriction endonucleases require 6 and 4 base pair sequences respectively for cleavage in a 10 kilobase DNA fragment, how many probable cleavage sites are present for these enzymes? Let's say that uh, this empty box, each empty box, represents a position on the double-stranded DNA where we can find certain base. We are told that we have to find probability that echo R1, which recognize six base on the double-stranded DNA and would cleave somewhere in between. So what is the probability that if we just take random fragment on the, on the double-stranded DNA, we are going to find certain sequence. Sequence is not given, but let's say, uh, let's say random sequence. For example, let it be the following sequence C, C, T, A, G, G. And we have four bases, thymine, guanine, cytosine, and adenine. So what is the probability that here we just took some random sequence along this 10,000 um, base pairs DNA fragment and that in this place we are going to find cytosine. We have four bases to choose from. So probability that this is going to be cytosine is going to be one out of four. So probability that uh, here we are going to find cytosine is going to be one quarter. And what is the probability that in the next position we again are going to find cytosine. Again probability is going to be one out of four. One out of four here. What is the probability that in the next position we are going to find thymine? And again, it's going to be one out of four. Adenine also is going to be one out of four. And guanine is going to be one out of four. And guanine is going to be one out of four. This is six base recognition site for and the nuclease, again, I took it just from my head. It's not exact sequence that this and the nucleus recognize, but it's just a theory how this works. So now we have to multiply all these independent probabilities and we are going to find the probability if we'll take random space on the 10,000 base pairs fragment of the double-stranded DNA, which consists of six uh, bases, that this is going to be this particular sequence that this enzyme would recognize. One quarter multiplied by one quarter is going to be one sixteenth. Multiplied by one quarter is going to be one over sixty-four. Multiplied by one quarter is going to be one over two hundred fifty-six multiplied by one quarter is going to be one over 1024 and multiplied by one quarter is going to be one over 4096. One more time, if you'll we'll just take random sequence that consists of 10,000 base pairs, 10,000 base pairs, 10 kilobase means 10,000. Kilo stand for thousand. So 10 kilobase means 10,000 base pairs. And we just divide by 4096. We don't need even calculator. We can say that uh, we can estimate that about two and a half times this restriction enzyme would cut this double-stranded DNA, but it can't cut it half time. So we can say that by rough estimation it's going to be two times if the site would consist of six bases.
Now let's consider recognition site for RSA1, which consists of four base pairs. That means uh, it's going to cut double stranded DNA every 256 base pairs. So 10,000 double stranded DNA made of 10,000 base pairs divided by 256 which is roughly is going to be 39 times. And this is answer T. One answer and second answer. Some of you may think why we shouldn't double these numbers because we only consider one strand of the DNA. But what about the other strand of the DNA? We also may find this sequence. So we have to multiply these numbers by two. And this is not true. Take a look. If we'll build a second strand of the DNA, so we are going to have five prime end here and three prime end here. And again, let's put uh, six boxes here and let's take a look what we are going to see on the second strand of the DNA. And here is going to be a sequence. So guanine base pairs with cytosine cytosine, thymine, adenine, guanine, and guanine here. So what do we see? Here's going to be the sequence five perm end C, C, T, A, G, G. And this is the same sequence as uh, we originally see on the other strand of the DNA. Five perm end C, C, T, A, G, G. So this is what we call palindromic sequence. If you think that palindromic sequence is something like this, for example, C, C, A, A, and for example, C, C. No, it's not palindromic sequence because on the other strand of the double stranded DNA, the sequence is going to be G, G, T, T, and G, G. So five prime end, three prime end here, three prime end and five prime end here. So as you see, it's not the same sequence. Five prime end CC, here is five prime end G, G. So this sequence is not palindromic. And when we talk about endonucleases, we usually talk about uh, sequences that are palindromic. This restriction and the nuclease, this one or this, would recognize one site on one strand of the DNA and on the other strand of the DNA, it's going to be the same site at the same place, not in the different place. So we don't have to multiply our answer by two. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day and see you in the next video. Goodbye.